Hi, I'm Aaron, and welcome to the Slim, Fitty, and Being Committee podcast, where me and my best friends, Danny and Matt, take a deep dive into hip hop, the genre that has formed an integral part of our lives. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at the underscore Slim, Fitty, Biggie Committee, and stay tuned for any upcoming podcast news. Coming up on today's show, we have Sci High the Prince of Black N Double A C P called New Artists Aligning Cultural People. Matt, this one was your choice, your second choice, and another one from Sci High. Talk to us. All right. Um, would you like me to talk to you about why I chose this album? A mixtape, sorry. Thanks for listening to the show. Yeah. Please like, subscribe. No, just tell us, us about your day. How did you do today? I uh, just woke up committee and, uh, and stay tuned for our next podcast. Had a shower, you know, Bye. got ready for the podcast. It's, you know, highlight <laughs> of my day. So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. nah, so oh, yeah. I chose this mixtape because um, I am in a bit of a sci high phase at the moment. Um, just, I, re- I really like his sound. I like what he raps about. I like sort of just the feel of um, his songs. And when, I, when I'm saying this, I'm referring to obviously the Black History Project 1, um, as well as some songs from um, No Dope on Sundays. So, like, that's the extent of what I've listened to, and I've, like, liked all of it, mainly the Black History Project 1, which... I think definitely contributed to why I chose this album because I was like, well, if the first one was good, then, you know, um, I want to give the second one a go. Like, I feel like I'm a bit So of... what did you give that album? What did you rate the first one out of five? I rated the first one. Sorry, I'm just looking back. I... Was it four or four and a half? Um, I gave it four stars. Yeah. Four stars. Cool. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I liked what he did on the first one. I thought, well, he's got a second one. I want to, you know, see what that's about. I feel like a, like the completionist within me was like, I was satisfied to pick this album because I wanted to get that done. Like, not like in like a, oh, let's just get it over with sort of way. Like I was genuinely interested, but I, um, I didn't actually think of this album initially. Um, like I didn't pick this mixtape initially. I was thinking about like a few others. And then one of them was the game's new album, Born to Rap. And like I was initially, I was really keen to choose that for us to review. But then I looked at the track length or the the number of tracks and then the duration of the album and i was just like oh shit that's like a big commitment (laughs) because like i think it was like it's 25 tracks and it's like well i think it's like over an hour and a half long and i was just like after coming off the back of what you'd picked aaron i was just like it was really nice having a shorter project to review so i was like well i don't want to do i don't want to do that and then i thought about run the jewels Run the Jewels 2, um, and I got that from Dead End Hip Hop because they, like, loved it. And then I was just like, nah, it wasn't vibing their sound. It was a very, like, I feel like it's an acquired taste, um, their, their sound. And then I was thinking about Schoolboy Q, um, uh, Blank Face. Um, again, another album that was sort of, I, I heard was, like, highly regarded. Um, I listened to a couple of tracks from it and then I was like, nah, still not loving it. Then I thought of um, Guess Who's Back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's rewind. Like, you I, didn't I, like, like, I feel like, like, for me, I need to, you know what draws me in about Sci High the most? It's literally his sound. Like, it's literally just his voice. And, like, Schoolboy Q's voice in, in the stage I'm in at the moment doesn't, like, overly appeal to me like i can see how the music's good like that that song he did with um kanye like obviously it's a great track but it's just not what i'm feeling like i'm not vibing it at the moment and i, I definitely could be i definitely could be wrong like in, in terms yeah, of like enough. why aren't i vibing it like that's like uh, he's obviously really talented and lots of people like him yeah. but like i was just like 
to be honest with you, like it's, same, it's the same as Michi Darko. It seemed like the, the the main reason, like, yes, he's a good lyricist, but the main reason you listen to him is for his sounds, like for his voice. Like his voice is an instrument. Like, I don't really think of Sci High as, I don't really think of Sci High as uh, his voice is his instrument, really. He's more of a lyrics for me, draw. He's that weird mix. He hasn't got like the most unique voice, but he's got definitely something to the way his albums sound. Yeah. Yeah, I, look, I, I, I guess I just, like, maybe I'm sleeping on, yeah. You're um, in a sci high phase. You're in a sci high phase. You just want to listen to sci high. That's it. And, and Schoolboy Q, funnily enough, not. is not sci high uh, Prince. There's one other album or mixtape that I was yeah. looking at that I, like, I was very close to choosing. However, I couldn't well, find it. Well, my concern it. is that you'll pick it and then... <laughs> You would have blown your opportunity to pick nah, it. So, I'm not, do you want to? No, nah, I'm not hold pick, it back. Nah, or are you ever picking it? I'm not picking it. But like, I was close to doing it for this one. Um, guess who's back? Mixtape, Fifty Cent for um, mixtape that caught Eminem and Dre's ear. Um, <laughs> thank God he didn't pick that one. Uh, I was just, I don't know. Like, I it just came to me randomly. I was like, oh, I think I was thinking of you actually, Aaron. I was like, oh, Fifty Cent, like. Let's do one of his albums. And I was like, "Oh, Danny's not going to like that." So then I was like, "Well, let's let's." Yeah, because that's what we that's what we do. We only choose albums that we're all going to like. <laughs> I think because I, I haven't listened to it, so <laughs> I, it would be an interesting one. Well, it's just like I'm interested to w- why there was so much like hype about him from M and Dre at that time. It's like I wanted to see what they heard, um, but then I was like, "Nah." And then I think after all of that, then I thought, "Fuck it." <laughs> I'm gonna go back and do. I'm gonna go back and do sci high. Um, and yeah, um, that was my sort of train of thought. And then when I saw that this one was shorter than Black History Project Two, I was like, great, uh, eleven tracks, forty something minutes. I was like, that's a r- relatively easy listen if it is garbage. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so um, hopefully it, it didn't put you through too much pain. <laughs> uh, so. Well, I will say you do have. <laughs> argument to make that this is Black History Project 2, so you could say that they're almost one album just based on titles. Yeah. yeah. I'd, like, this is the sequel. I feel like they don't... Oh, they, they do connect, but they're, they're also separate, though, as well. Like, there's a, hmm. there's a distinct sound difference between the two projects, I think. That's what I picked up, anyway. Um, yeah. That's fair enough. Like, you know, you just get through rhythms especially when you're listening, like you just enjoy a particular sound. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that was my train of thought. Awesome. Let's get into it. The official track listing, track one, intro. All right. Who wants to kick it off? Danny, go. Danny or Matt, kick us off. Um, I want to kick off the next track, so Danny, you can kick us off. (laughs) <laughs> yes no I want to do the next one uh, okay now I'll do this one alright so intro Um. so straight away you get this angelic female vocal sample and I am in they've got me straight away and then the drums kick in and they don't disappoint either just crisp drums sample is so good like i love this beat this is such a good way to open up this um mixtape and i just want to say before i get into any further like and i i think i said this or maybe i haven't said this yet on the podcast but like i do remember when this actually came out at the time i saw that it came out and I skimmed through it, like, because I loved the first Black History Project. So I skimmed through this one at the time. And for some reason, I decided that none of it sounded, you know, good enough that I should even think about downloading it and, and having it in my collection. And then straight away from the first track, listening to it now, I'm like, 
how did I decide not to even download this one song? Like, why would I could have been listening to this song for five <laughs> years? What have I been doing? Do you doing? remember if there's a reason you chose not to? Like, was like if you think back, well, but, no, I, do, I just the reason is because I literally skimmed through this mixtape, listened to like maybe you know, when I skim, I'll listen to 10, 15 seconds of every single song, and so obviously that 10 or 15 second sound bite from each song did not you know grab my attention none of them did apparently at the time whereas now 10 seconds into this one song on the first song and i'm like holy shit this is gonna be a banger so i don't know what i was thinking back then but um i'm happy that we got to at least for, for the for this first intro song i'm happy we, we got to do this mixtape so beat is a banger Beat is awesome, and Sly High does not disappoint either. So I just want to point out maybe my favourite lyrics. I heard some ends thinking about attacking me. I keep some cats with me that turn killers for your majesty. I think that's his first line, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's his opening line. It's his opening line. He's done it. So the beats got me from the opening line. Of The beats got me from the from the first sound of the sample he's got me from the first line he says like this song is so good and then the other um quote that i that i picked out was like the slave owner's gun i'm a masterpiece i treat my shoddy like a boom box it's full of batteries that's, that's so funny you pick you picked exactly the same lyrics as i did i want to hear what I, like keep going sorry for interrupting what, the exact two? The exact the two, two, one, quotes, the two quotes. I mean, it's a short song, so, like, I guess the chances are higher, but still, you pick the exact yeah. two quotes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, yeah, I liked that one, the masterpiece one, because, like, slaves have to call their people, their white people, their masters. And so, masterpiece. A gun yeah. is called a piece. It's just the wordplay is so good, and then the batteries – like resemble shotgun mm. shells, like it all works. It's just, it's all in that quote, just great wordplay. So like I could even pull out, the thing is I could have even pulled out more quotes because like he's got more than that, but he drops a lot of N-bombs on this song and it's really hard to just, you know, mm. pluck quotes out because it's just awkward to to have to, navigate around all the end bombs but like the talladega nights one is funny um i just can't say it so yeah. i don't care that the song's short but i don't care this song is everything that i want from a sci high song obviously five stars mm, well i'm going to jump in because i pretty much agree with you on everything because the beat yeah. is so good this is how you start an album, like it catches you from the second it starts. There's no skit. There's no nothing in there. It's literally just this amazing beat. And I think we're going to realize this, and I think we already have. Sai has an amazing ear for beats. From what I've heard, he just has this really nice thing that he wants to hear from his beats, and he chooses them. And I think this is, we're going to see this throughout this album. Um, and, yeah. This is just bars, absolute bars from start to finish. It's just a flex and you're like, damn. Mm -hmm. By the end of this, you're like, I just want to listen to the next track. And that's what you yeah. want from track number one. Your track yeah. number one is garbage. <laughs> you don't want to listen to track number two. You failed your album, but he's nailed it here. Um, and he pulled some Black History Project like in the first one shit here because he's like, um, I done seen it all and I ain't have to touch a milli gram of the yams. He's done the Picard, so Van Go. He did that in um, the other album that we listened to. So he's used that same technique um, and he's just got multi syllable rhymes. His rhyme scheme is really good. Um, I literally cannot nitpick any of this. Um, and he's got that line, Section 8 and some food stamps from your fam. 
You can't study for the test. You can't cheat on life's exam. Mm. When you're good with yeah. your sheep, man, no need to buy a lamb. I didn't get that that bar. I tried to look it up, but I didn't get what it meant. And a lamb That's is a lamb everyone's again. a sheep. Everyone's following him. Oh. Uh. So this is just like so good. So good. And yeah. 100% mm. five stars, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys have said everything I wanted to say now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on, Aaron. Do your transition. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, I'll, I'll try and say some different shit then. I'm not just going to repeat what you guys said because, like, yeah, you've pretty much said everything that needs to be said. So you um, agree with us how it, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I would also add sort of what Aaron was touching on about, like, you're going to see – like a certain style from him throughout this mixtape. I, I can't remember where I, I, I read it. Definitely wasn't genius. It was somewhere else. I branched out with this one. That was, like something that's really um, interesting about this particular mixtape is there are very minimal, if any, I don't think features um, on this mixtape. Yeah, there aren't so any rappers, are there? I- are there? I don't think so. No. There's no rappers. There's I think Joe, like some there's jo- hook, some chicks yeah. from the hook or I don't know. That's right. Joe Ducey, I think, is on one of the on tracks featuring on the hook. But other than that, this mixtape is pretty much like just sci high And I think that's like that's something else is really appealing about this mixtape because it's like how many times do all of us like see like an album that we like are interested in. And then we're, like, we look at the track list and you're like, Oh, look at this feature. Like this is, this is shit. Like sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes you're like, Oh, this is going to be a really exciting feature. But like sometimes you just want to hear the, the artist who you, you want to listen to and no one else. Yeah. So it's like Sci High has, has done that. He's, he, he's, he's been like, you're just going to get me. Yeah. Um, like think about it. Like, like with Sci High, like is there another rapper that you would want to feature on his on a song of his that would make it better? Or do you think, like, he, he can just carry songs by himself? There's yeah. No, there's, no, yeah, yeah. there's no feature that would improve a yeah. song, really, that I can support. think of. Like, Kanye, not really. Like, I, I don't know. There's just, I just, this is, him him by himself is all I need, to be honest. Yeah. But this was the huge criticism of the album we reviewed last time, Chez Noir, that every one of the features elevated the track. Whereas you listen to exactly. this one and you're like, well, I don't even know it's who could elevate. It's a different class. Chez yeah. Noir and Sci High is a completely different level of rapper. Mm. Um, so, like, I, I wanted to, like, say that straight away because it's like, from the beginning of this song, it's just sci high and it just like just goes all the way through and it's just like that's all you're gonna get the whole time. But like you don't realise that until you've listened to the whole mixtape and you're like, damn, that was good. Like that was just if you're wanting like a fix of him, well this is how you get it. I mean, on his first project he had features, um and like that was okay. Like I didn't mind it, but yeah, I guess this is just more pure him. Um I also thought that um I like the line where he said, um, semi-automatic letter N, have it, like he asked to borrow it and he ain't ever give it back to me. Um, I had to think about that line in my head. Um, And I just, I don't know, he has this like ability to paint a picture in your mind through his lyrics and and make you want to go back and re-listen to it and try and like catch what he was trying to get through. Um, Like... I don't know, I just, I, I really, I thought that was a cool bar. Um, and yeah, exa- everything else that you boys said, usually I'm like, I'm not going to give five stars if it's not a complete song, like with the hook and, yeah. you know, all of those that sort of things. Philosophy. But this, uh, yeah. No but hook, said, no five stars. Um, exactly, exactly. So I. But you and I know, but you know how Danny and I feel about that philosophy because it, it puts you in a tough spot yeah. with tracks like this. Yeah, well, it kind of backs you into a corner from giving something a five stars. So I was like, nah, screw it. I'd like the short duration and the, the no catchy hook doesn't bother me just because how, like of how everything else is executed here. Like he's, he's murdering this track and like it's the first song and you're like, right, let's go next. Like 
I'm, I'm ready. Like, he's, he's warmed you up. How do you so, feel, Matthew, yeah. about no skits on the album? You are the skit man. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's what that, that's the other thing I was going to say. Like, that's yeah. the, like, yes, it's only 11 tracks, like, but you could beef this out with more hooks, more features, and like make it essentially a like what an album would be. But like, do you really need to? Like, why not just? I get what you guys are saying now. It's like, why not just cut out all that shit and just give me track after track of the artist who I want to hear, and that's it. Yes. Granted, I'm going to get a couple of songs. Granted, I'm going to get a couple of songs in any album that I don't like. There's never going to be one album where every single song you are like, this is five stars. No, that's not like, true. Not gonna... That is not true. There are albums that are all fire. Every single track you have given five stars. Oh, well. But, but, but yeah, that, like, hell on earth. Not Monty, five stars. You can't say that. There's maybe two songs that I would give a four. Everything else is a five. There's not a single weak three star or anything. That's as close as it gets okay. for me. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. But I will say the the whole point I think this album's really good for it, jumping onto your, the back of your skit comment, is that unless a skit adds to a song, it's not necessary. We don't want to hear it because it there's just this little bit of it just takes away and Matt, like you're the perfect example. You won't rate a skit more than four stars, so it cannot be perfect. Mm. Wait, what did he rate the Eminem one on the Royce album? Do you remember? No, I gave that. Four, I gave it four. Oh shit! If you even give an Eminem a yeah. four, yeah, there's a big problem there. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that's why Danny and I have been trying to avoid rating any skits because they kind of throw your opinion of the album out just a touch. Like, if you can't give it a five and all the tracks are five stars, it automatically goes down purely based on your four-star four, four star rating of the skits. Whereas if you only rate it on the music, then it's probably going to be closer. And ideally, no skits, just music. Yeah. Yeah, look, I, I see. I think I haven't – I've been oblivious to that, what I've just admitted to in the past because, like, I just like to judge an album or a mixtape on everything that that artist gives me because it's like, well, they inte- they wanted it there. However, when I get something like this and it, like Dave Sci High has given me what he intended, no skits, I'm like, well, it cuts out a lot of fucking wasting time, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> um, however, sometimes, sometimes, it, like in the Royce album, I thought the skits added value to the album. I thought it painted a, like it. It made it like a story. It made it feel like a, a movie experience. Like so, I wouldn't take the skits out of Royce's album. It just it just depends on how you like how you execute them and how it fits with the story. I'm all about there needs to be a, to make a mixtape an album or an album like worthy of being an album. I feel like it needs to have a theme like running throughout. And and like I'll talk about the the theme that I picked up here later from this that. I think is really ingenious what he's done here um, following on from Black History Project. Like, obviously, you're going to be like, well, there's going to be about, you know, Black History because that's the title. But I think it's more than that as well. Um, but, yeah, we can talk about that later. But I think album construction is really important. Like, taking into account at the end of the album, like, we're writing individual songs one by one, but what we always need to keep in mind is album construction at the end because that plays a significant part in your enjoyment. How does one song fit into the other song? You know, the track list is so critical in any album that it needs to play a part at the end. Yeah. Like of our ratings. Yeah. Hmm. I, 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 I feel like I, I'm, if, if I need to get onto this, this next track for you. <laughs> I feel like I'm... Well, what did you rate this one before you get on to the next one? I'm bursting out of my shell to tell you about the next one. Um, I rated this five stars. Awesome. Well, let's get into track two. Let's see if it's a masterpiece yeah. uh, based on the way <laughs> no. Matt is talking about it. I can uh, I can see it coming. But track two, Master P, Matt, let's go. All right. So I've never... 
I've never expressed a, like the the following feeling towards like a song in in our podcast, like in our history of a short history of doing podcasts. But if I could give a track more than five stars, oh my god, I said the be, same thing. I said the same this, thing. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> This would be the very first track that I would, out of all the projects we've reviewed, this would get more than five stars for me. So, um, like, granted, I've only given it five stars because I feel like that's, like, you know, I'm just going to stick to the, because otherwise it will mess up my, like, <laughs> algorithm at the end. But If you give one <laughs> but, song, like, 25 stars, it throws off the algorithm. It? <laughs> exactly. So... It, it's a five star track, but it's it's worthy of more, in my opinion. This, come on, this track come on, just give us the wrong. actual. Give us, come on, come on. All right, all right, okay. So, like, the sample, fire. The beat is the hardest beat. Like, it, it, it like I need to listen to this in a car, in a vehicle, in with a good stereo system. Like, I feel like I like this would go into your bones. Like the beat, um, the verses, like dope. Um, and the hook, everything it has, it has every, it, it ticks every box I need to give it a, 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 an actual song five stars. Um, that that there's so many bars here that I like, but my favourite were, um, see when I go jumping off the deep end, shallow minded adults can't paddle through what I'm speaking. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Music saved my mm-hmm. life. This just ain't a hobby. My partners grew up doing one eight seven robbery. Uh, the delivery like, when he says that, the delivery yeah. on that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's just and it's 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 cool because it's like he he's like he's come from that life, but like look at where he is now. Like I feel like he's a very reflective rapper, and he's like, you know, yes, I came up from you know that, but now I'm doing this, and that shows that progression that I've made in my life, and like. I don't know. I just he's always been such an educated rapper, and like that that first like jumping off the deep end. Shallow minded adults can't paddle through what I'm speaking. Like it just there's so so many visuals that you can yeah. take from that yeah. um, that bar there, and also the delivery. However, that wasn't my favorite delivery. I picked these bars for the delivery of them, and shout out to Young Thug as well. <laughs> um, just just my rich homie. Um, that's a shout out to another rapper. Is it Rich Rich Gang or um, yeah, Rich Homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they did an album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to pick, can I just say, I was seriously thinking of picking that mixtape for this podcast. So we would review Rich Gang, which is Young Thug and Rich Homie Kwan. But the thing, the thing is, how do you review 20 songs where you can't understand any of the lyrics? We can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, the album is absolute fire. But there's just almost yeah. nothing to talk about. It'd just be like, yeah, this song's amazing. Yeah, this song's amazing. Next. Yeah, what did they say? Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we've talked about that before as well. Like how I was saying, like Sci High and Michi Darko, their voice is an instrument, or more so Michi Darko, as I get what you were saying before. But like the Young Thug's voice is an instrument. Yeah, definitely. Like, so it's not about the, the lyrics, <laughs> it's just about the sound. Correct. Mm. Um, but that the, the the best delivery of this song by far is just my rich homie young thuggin with the banger only brought my 38 because I had 30 in the chamber because hey, I had <laughs> yeah. 30 in the chamber yeah. <laughs> like and I love it how the beat and everything just cuts off while he says that like and <laughs> I don't even know what the line means to be honest but it just sounds cool <laughs> like um, it's just so good um, so I actually had 30 was, bullets in the chamber like he's talking about bullets, so the thirty-eight is thirty-eight inch, and then that's the type of gun, and yeah. the thirty in the chamber. That's bullets in the chamber. Ah, uh, thirty-eight millimeter. Sorry. Yeah, I got that. Like I knew it was about a gun, but I was like, okay, so he only brought his thirty-eight pistol because he had thirty in the chamber. So, like, what he's saying, like he's got bullets in there. So, what's the point of bringing a gun with no bullets? Ah, uh, okay, okay. I needed, to, I needed to look into that more. But, yeah, like that was that, is, that makes sense. But the delivery of that was just fantastic. I put it in as my bars, yeah. my favorite bars of the um, – I also didn't know, didn't realize this, didn't pick up on it until Genius, until looking through the lyrics. How creative was it that in his final verse, 
he laid clearly, concisely laid out or laid down eight rules for any hustler, baller, gangster, cat pillar, or neighborhood drug dealer. <laughs> like, if, if you listen to it, like before each rule, like you hear like a, a vocal going like rule one, and then like he says it, and then like rule two, and like it just. I don't know. It's like some Fight Club shit. It was like yeah. I thought well, that was it's, really it's cool. It's some biggie. It's biggie Ten Commandments shit. If you've heard that, yeah, where he breaks yeah. down the Ten Commandments yeah. of like crack dealing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was awesome. Um, yeah, there's, there's there's literally nothing like seeing. I've said that I'd, I'd give it more than five stars as I could. There's I, I, I'd challenge anyone to find one thing that's not good about this this song so i'll be interested to see what you guys i reckon reckon aaron can i reckon aaron can find something okay all right (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna keep my mouth shut (laughs) 63 stars 63 stars yeah that's what i was waiting for that's what i was waiting for (laughs) (laughs) well like here's the thing i had a conversation with matt like maybe a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about this this mixtape, but we we you know we we try to keep our opinions hidden until we actually do this review today. So we were like talking around it, but but I couldn't help myself. All I said to Matt was two words: Master P. And he knew exactly what I was talking about. And then I did the same thing to Aaron. And he had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, no idea. <laughs> so that's why I'm that's why I'm curious to hear Aaron's opinion. But my opinion is this beat is nasty dog. I wrote that. <laughs> no, I wrote no you. Yes, yes. I, I wrote grr, nasty dog. Nasty dog. <laughs> is nasty dog. Oh yeah. And that's, I literally wrote I'm glad. that shit is nasty dog. Yeah, that's, I'm that's glad. the first part of my review. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's I'm the first part of my I'm glad you guys wrote that, and I'm glad you guys wrote it and didn't say it because, like, if you had to said it, that would have been bad. <laughs> ah, he's got us. He's got us. <laughs> yeah, he's got us. <laughs> yeah, like this is one of those screw face beats, and the funny thing is, um, like this is the second you know, proper song on this mixtape. And the second proper song on the first Black History Project was Huey. And that was the big screw face song on that mixtape. Mm. So like it, it's it's got a bit of a similar structure here where they where he comes out with the second song with the big nasty banger. But but beat for beat I think this one is even harder than Huey. Just just for the beat alone. Um, and yeah, like Matt was, he opened up with saying the, you know, if there was one song that I would give more than five stars, that's, I literally at the end, I, I just thought, you know, five stars is just almost not enough for how I feel about this song right now. But like, you know, I'm just, it's so fresh in my mind. I just love it so much. It is five stars. Let's not, we're not let's not be silly. It's not six stars. It's not seven <laughs> stars, five stars, but it's so good. It's one of those amazing five stars. Um, did you, um, did you, you said that you didn't have intro on your playlist. Like, I'm going to be like horrified if like, cause I hadn't listened to this before, but you had. So if you didn't have Master P on your playlist uh, before we, I, I said you had to listen to this mixtape, like th- that's shame on you. Like, did you or not? No. Well, like I said, back in the day, I gave every song like 10 seconds to impress me. Okay. And none of them okay. did at that time. Whereas doing it today and really listening to every song this song goes on any playlist every day of the week on my you know love songs in my soul sample playlist in every (laughs) playlist doesn't matter if it applies or not it's going in every playlist right now Um, okay okay so yeah um 
the one lyric, like there's heaps of lyrics, but the one that I, you know, stood out to me was when he said, um, like KRS-One, they say I burn too many bridges. Shit. I don't see anybody trying to book MC Shan. You you might not understand that one, but KRS-One is just like, he's a legendary old school rapper, like from back in the day. Like he's on the Mount Rushmore. Like you've heard Rakim, you've heard Cool G rap. Um, KRS-One is on the Mount Rushmore of hip hop. So he's comparing himself to one of the greats, one of the old school legends. And the, and the thing about this line is, so KRS-One had this legendary beef with a rapper called MC Shan, and he won that beef when he dropped the song that was called The Bridge Is Over. And the bridge uh, in that song meant uh, Queen's Bridge, like the, the, the place in New York. Mm-hmm. There's a connection between Burning Bridges, which is what Sci High says, and then the song The Bridge Is Over. And nowadays, people still talk about KRS One as like a living legend. And no one talks about MC Shan anymore. I'm sure you guys haven't heard of it probably. Um, no, no. Yeah, so whoever Sci High is burning bridges with, he's saying like they just don't mean anything. They won't mean anything in the end. Like basically if Sci High is burning bridges, it's because he's better than you and he doesn't need you and you are nothing and you are pathetic and you will never be anything. So, like, that line to me is just so cool and so layered and, and so rich with history. So that, like, really stuck out to me. But, like, yeah, this song is just, I mean, it's, it's five stars and that's it. And I really want to hear what Aaron says. I'm curious. Well. Let me start by saying that I agree with a lot of what you both said. I'm scared. Just that beat straight away, that it had my screw face as well. Like I couldn't help but think of Huey as well. Um, And there are so many good lines. And that beat, like the heavy drums, the light piano, it just sets that ominous tone for like, Hustler, baller, gangster, cat peeler. Like it was just, the beat just sets up the song really well. And, you know, it's produced by Tech Beats. He did a fantastic job on this. Like an unbelievable job. And sometimes we don't recognize the producers as much, but Tech Beats, he killed it. Mm -hmm. So, and he had a massive hand in the last one. He did majority of the tracks. And he did the majority of tracks in this one as well. So, um, yeah, he did a really, really, really good job. Yeah. I'm going to say, at first, the hook kind of annoyed me. Yeah. However, however, Mm. after you properly listen to it a few times, it is so good. (laughs) It is so good. And the lines in here like you could pick any one of the lines and they're so good you guys pretty much picked a lot of mine um but one you missed matt and a 50 cent reference was publicist for gangsters was hustling when wankster yeah referencing 50 cent song wankster um i knew you'd like that (laughs) yeah so that i just found that cool um but yeah he's just on some gangster shit and that third verse like you said, Danny, it's coming off like, you know, the Ten Crack Commandments, like that big issue. Mm-hmm. And arguably his delivery here is so good because the rules he makes are so good. <laughs> like when he's like hit in the head, the body fall, Junior's so at the crew. And then like rule number three, you're going to kill each other. Just make sure it stays off the news. Pull your K out. Leave him laid out. How it play out is cool. It's over, yay, I assume. So they had to break out the broom. Street sweepers turn your hood to a stage off the doom. I understand sometimes they've got to do what they got to do. It's just yeah. so gangster shit. Like, it's just saying, like, use your AK, kill some people, 
street sweepers got to like you know clean it up but you got to do what you got to do <laughs> like ah oh, this is absolutely a masterpiece and five stars hey. from three of us yeah two in a row five star tracks oh yeah and we've never had that that's for no. sure yeah no nah, two in a row I, I agree how good is that second rule though no gun pla- no gun play around playgrounds or schools. This shit deep, you can't swim and stay out the pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> and two two tracks in, we're already giving it two five stars. You know, once you hear this, you're like, damn, if this I uh, like it just leaves you speechless and you're like I'm so excited to see what's next. Oh, yeah. But you're almost scared. You're almost scared because you're like, how can you follow it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just get a little bit scared with a song like this because you're like, it's so good. And then it can almost set you into a false sense of security. Yeah. Well, the thing is, after hearing a song like this, it really it sets my expectations extremely high. And I want it to stay at this level the entire time. Yeah, I was really yeah. scared the next song would be a week's track. Yeah. Did you know, I didn't know until I looked it up, I'd heard the Hustler Ball against the Cat Pillar. Like, I'd heard that Neighbourhood Drug Dealer. I was like, where have I heard that from? And then I found out it was from that Break Em Off something. And I didn't, like, obviously the Master P, the title, I'd heard of um, I've heard of them, like him before, but, like, I didn't realise that it was from that song. And then I was like, as soon as I saw the title of that song, song I was like, oh, is that the one that goes, Break Em Off, so... Break them off. So I was like, oh, that's where it comes from. So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. Let's... Wait. Before we continue, hold on. Before we continue, Master P, does anyone know much about him? Like, is that an, another sort of, you know how in the first Black History Project, he, like, picked notable, um, like, African-American people to, like, name his tracks after? Is Master P, like, a notable African-American person, like, in terms of the rap? Like game is he like a um, legend? I don't know about legend, but like he he's like the head of his label kind of thing, and he he um he signed Snoop Dogg at one point. Like when Snoop Snoop Dogg left Death Row, he went to Master P, Master P's label. Um, oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, he he's he's a record label owner. He's a rapper. Uh, he's a big deal in the circles that he runs in, like in, yeah. in the world hip hop scene, like I don't think he's as big as, um, you know, how, how he is locally considered lo- locally. He's like a legend. Okay. All right. Fair enough. He's definitely not like a, a, a weak person. Would you say? <laughs> Are you trying to do Aaron transitions? I already used that line. I said, "No, you uh, didn't let's say weak track. people. You said something else." Yeah, I said, "Hopefully, this isn't a weak track." Track number oh. three. Weak people. <laughs> that was that was pathetic. <laughs> that was absolutely pathetic. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just hoping for one day for you to be pleased with the transition <laughs> that I have. To be honest, we'll get to a thousand podcasts later <laughs> and still not happy. <laughs> Track number three, Weak People. I might kick this one off if you don't mind. I do mind. Matt, kick this off. No, All I'm right, kicking here this we off. Go. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. It's really funny. It's really funny that we spoke about a skit at the start of the album. We're like, I can take or leave skits. And then what do we have? A long skit at the start of this track. However, the skit that was chosen by Reverend James David Manning he chose was it. No, he as in it. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know he was involved. No, as in the the skit that was chosen by Sai Hai. Oh, okay. <laughs> was uh such a smart ass. Uh, well, <laughs> was amazing. Because the we talk about delivery a lot, the delivery of that skit was amazing. Like mm-hmm. he just gets so into it. Like it made me actually want to hear other sermons that he does, yeah. just because 
of how much he believes it. Yeah, like and- it makes you hype for what's about to come. Like he he hypes you. He's the hype man of this song. He is the hype man of this song. Yeah. And there's a second one in there yeah. as well. Yeah. Like there's an interlude in the middle of the song. And again, ordinarily, I would hate it. However, because it's such a strong skit and interlude, it adds to the song. It doesn't take it away. It adds. Um, so, yeah, I just want to touch on that because it was amazing from start to finish. And what's really interesting is what he talks about. Like, Sahai gives his opinions on, like, social issues. And there's just, like, heaps of interesting opinions, especially because of what's happening right now. Absolutely. Like, again, we, we spoke about this last time um, and on the um, Flatbush Zombies that there's, like, there feels to be themes, you know, we're talking five years later, the same themes are still, especially now in our lives, in the in the back of, um, you know, the, the killing of black people by cops yeah. and the Black Lives Matter. Um, and this is just a really interesting view on it. Well, it makes um, you think, it makes you think like, they were talking about, like, Flatbush Zombie was talking about this in 2013. Sci-Hi's talking about this in 2015. It's so relevant to literally today and the whole George Floyd shit that's happening and, and the Black Lives Matter movement. It's so relevant to all of that. And maybe that just goes to show that George Floyd has sparked this big debate. But, like, everyone really knows this has been happening since, you know, the dawn of Day time. One. The dawn of time. Rappers have been talking about it. Everyone's been talking about it. And and this George Floyd was that straw that broke the camel's back. And now it's just more relevant than ever. But it's always been happening. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's all that talk about, like, all lives matter, blah, 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 blah. But, like, literally what they don't understand is they're not saying that not all lives matter. They're just saying that black lives matter as well. I cannot, I cannot talk with people, and I have. I cannot talk with people who say all lives matter. It's, they, they can't Agreed. get it through. You, you'll never convince them what Black Lives Matter means. They just don't understand. They think when they hear Black Lives Matter, they hear only Black Lives Matter. Correct. So uh, it frustrates me to no end and I will not have a yeah. conversation with an all lives matter person. Yeah, I agree. 100% agree. It's just ignorant yeah. is what it is and it's just – once again, people in a privileged position turning around and saying all lives matter. Like we've discussed this, Danny. It's like saying, you know, you have breast cancer awareness and like everyone, someone turning around and going, all cancer matters. Well, yes, of course. But well, we're, we're not talking about everyone. We're talking about the problem right now. And the problem is that black people are getting killed by police all the time. Yep. Like, you know, when was the last time any one of us was scared by like, around police never. literally me never yeah never and matt what about you like have you ever been scared around police no well there you go so i don't understand i literally don't get it but having s- still going on like it's embarrassing that like there's people who've spoken about out about this in you know throughout history and it seems like like we've gotten nowhere yeah Literally, but it's also happening, you know, in our backyard at home, just not to the same extent. But what's interesting about this track is that he's definitely talking about it, but he also cha- like references the fact that African-Americans aren't doing enough yeah. to help themselves, yeah. which is a really interesting view. Like, you know, he talks about, you know, th- there's the lines in the second verse of like a white man kill a black, we holler persecution. So instead of looting, it's time to find a better school in. You act like y'all don't understand what I'm electrocuting. Did I st- stutter? <laughs> elocuting. <laughs> yeah. You don't understand what I'm electrocuting? What are you talking about? No, elocuting. That's what I said. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> y'all ain't no Black Panthers. You wasn't there with Newton. You ain't marched with Martin. Try, try to be better humans. Mm. Like... And that's what Reverend James David Manning is saying. He's saying, like, you know, you got to step up um, and that, you know, there are 
there are black people killing other black people and that nobody talks about that. Um, I just found this song super interesting and this beat again is so good. The beat just matched the tone, like the piano and the drums are so good. And this is no exception. Um, I mean, this song has so much depth and so much delivery in it. This ain't no weak song and it's five stars. Hey, he's done it. He's transitioned his own rating. Name, yeah. name, another, name another three five-star track run. <laughs> it's, better than, uh, it's better than this. Well, well I was going to say, after your reviews, depending on how I'm sitting, which is better, these first three versus, you know, the Huey, Napoleon, Basquiat three? No, I'll, I'll definitely answer that. The Huey um, um, Mandela... Oh uh, yeah, but, Mandela. Um, My bad. Huey Mandela and Napoleon. Um, Napoleon they are a hundred and ten percent a stronger run. Yep. Um, however, that doesn't take away from the fact that these are the three five star tracks, and it shouldn't. Like, well, but, I, I'm going to be the one that doesn't give these three five stars. But go on. Interesting. Okay. Really. Yep. But for the reason no, for the reason that you guys never seem to have an issue with and only I do, which is this the, the mixing and mastering. You had no issues at all. No. No. You, you, I literally you had went, no issues. You went from the hardest banger you've heard in ages with, with Master P, and then you go to this, weak people, the drums alone are on different planets it's it's it does not come it doesn't hit hard there's they they did something wrong yeah but you can't tell me it doesn't match the tone here it doesn't like, match it the, the, the consistency the sound consistency of the mixtape do you, but you you're telling me you didn't notice a single like you just didn't notice it, it sounded exactly the same i i mean i obviously noticed that it's a different like beat and it's a different like like quality of like sound, but it didn't bother me like because I don't know. There's just so much else that's going on in this track that like it bothered me know, enough it that it dropped half a star for me. That's how much it bothered me. Because okay. it literally didn't annoy me at all. No, you're saying well, yeah, you're saying you didn't notice it. I'm saying how? Yeah. I'm saying how can you not notice this thing? I think it's a good I question, think, but like, I didn't. You are really, I really, really, and maybe you didn't, and maybe it's just me, but I really want both of you, just to, just so that I'm not crazy, to go back and listen to these two songs back to back and only compare the way the drums hit and tell but me. But they're different drums. No, 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 no. It's just it, they don't come through clearly on this at all. Maybe you're Eric Ark Elliott of the group. Maybe you're the producer. Maybe you no, have that ear for sale. I am so far from a producer. <laughs> it's not even funny. But, like, it was enough. It was enough. It was bad enough for me to drop half a star. That's how annoying it was for me. That's big. But anyway. Drop. Uh, go on. You go, Matt. It's five stars. It's just, it just, he, it's really thoughtful. It's re like he's like planned out exactly what he wanted to say on this like very topical and like serious issue. He's speaking from like um, a position of um, like of, of knowledge. Like he's not speaking on behalf of like a race that he's not a part of. So it's like, I feel like if anyone was to say the things that he's going to say, like he is from, coming from like a worthy place. Um, Cause obviously they're quite mm. controversial. Um, it's um it's empowering like despite it also like you could argue like or like a, a, an african-american person could argue that what he's saying is not um is, is sort of like um is, is it could, i'm trying to say like some african-american people might take what he's saying as like an attack a personal attack against their culture but like, I believe that he's what he's trying to do is trying to empower them to like make like more positive life choices to put themselves in a better position to 
um, um, fight back, but not necessarily with their fists, but with like, you know, um, through education. Like, yeah. Like with that line about better schooling and stuff. So yeah. like, I feel like that's like his intention. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, pre- the preacher, I agree with what you said, like Aaron, that it fits really well. I also think it's really cool how, no, that's not the right word. I think it's really, um, it's, it's a nice touch. Like it's a thoughtful touch where Sai Hai has become the preacher at the end. Like, mm. um, Mate, so he's like on his he, Tupac shit. He's like calling out all the rappers that, that just talk shit and don't contribute to, you know, any good causes and stuff. He's, he's, he's spitting some shit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, and he's like almost like, like taking the, the baton, so to speak from the, the reverend and is like n- taking the stand for like black people and by like echoing his, the, the initial preacher's messages, but like, like just supporting what he was saying and like from, from a positive like standpoint though, it, well not like it, it doesn't sound positive, but like, I feel like the, like I said before, the intention behind it was to empower black people. Um, which is obviously a, a really good thing. So I, I, I just like what this track stands for and I think it was executed really well. Um, yeah, nothing. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if I've given it five stars, nothing has like bothered me enough to like take away stars. So if the, if the, the mixing wasn't as strong as like the, the previous track, like, okay, like I, I can see where, where, where Danny's coming from. Like, I mean, to be fair, I gave the last track, buddy 63 stars so you know <laughs> still a step down from that if you're looking at like star rating but it's 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 for me undoubtedly a five star track because like it just i don't know for it all works for me for me personally it might not work for everyone though yeah i think you touched on a good message though i don't think he's saying like it's only up to black people who's just saying like it's twofold like look elsewhere, but look within as well. Yeah, he wants like to it's see. Important that, he wants to see a positive change within the black community before they turn their attention on like sy- systemic racism. Like they need to see change within themselves. That's what he's saying. Yeah, because yeah. he, he has that other line: "Y'all ain't trying to start a revolution. You're looking for a restitution and kill each other every day, and ain't no evolution." Mm-hmm. My partner shot a hundred and and it. It was never proven. We just label him a gangster and keep it moving. Yeah, that was my favorite bar of the um of the song. Yeah, the the, mm. the part where it's um the part where it's um my partner shot a hundred and that's exactly yeah, that what one. I chose as well. Yeah. From there all the way yeah. till you'll act end. like you don't understand what I'm elocuting. It's electrocuting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's good but yeah but also the yeah. other bar the um cynical ass and sorry that i offended you i bring something different while n sounding identical like that also hit a like a, a nerve with me because like you just like you know how some rappers will like make claims to things that they're not necessarily they haven't necessarily earned or just aren't factually correct or like look at Shay Noir, like saying that she's in the top five. Like that's like, as a listener, you just can't believe that. So it's like, it immediately puts you off. Whereas like when he says that, that line that I've just said, you know, um, that he, you know, he brings something different. Well, he does bring something different. He's, he's quite a unique, like in terms of his content, like I feel like he, he's, he's in another class of a rapper and he does sound different like to other rappers. He's not. Yeah. Like I, I, he just, he just speaks truth in my mind. Mm. But he speaks his opinion is what he does so well. Exactly. Like he's just and he's really, telling you what he thinks. Yeah, He's really strong in his convictions. That's what he is like. And that's, that's admirable. Yeah. And agree yeah. with him or not, that's, you can't take that away from him. Well, I don't really have anything to say. Like, I basically, you know, chipped in with what you guys were saying and I agree with everything you guys said. And um, it's just so relevant today. Um, Yeah, like the only thing I will add is what I said earlier. The reason why I'm 
downgrading it to four and a half stars is just is just a personal beef that I have with the sound quality. Like <laughs> everything else about this song is five stars. Everything. I, I just wanted them to clean it up, clean up the sound. That's all I have an issue with. But it was enough that it's it's going to stop me from putting it on a playlist because it's going to get to that song in the playlist and suddenly the sound quality drops in the playlist. So I just yeah. don't want that. I just don't need it. That's why it, it's annoying for me. just messes with my playlists. Um, but, yeah, everything you guys said is, is, is true and – if, if it wasn't for that, five stars. But let me just say, what a star. Like even, even having said four stars, this is the way to start any album. Oh, yeah. It's not going to stop just yet. No. Let's see. Boiler. You're going for it. You're going to get that money. Hey, that was a good one. That was a good one. Good one. Track well four. Done. Get Money. Thank you, Danny. Oh, it's the first compliment I've had in uh, six months. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Matt, did you want to get this one? Did you? Yeah, I did. All right. So, you know how when you listen to a mixtape or an album for the first no, time and there's I that one? I don't know that feeling. Please explain it to me. How dare you? <laughs> how bloody dare you? All right. So, you know how. Oh, fuck. When you listen to a mixtape or an album for the first time and one song sticks in your head after you finish listening, yep. this is it. Oh, God, you've stolen my shit again. <laughs> Seriously. How are, you, how are you doing this? You've got to be quick, mate. You've got to get quicker. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm after getting that money, so I'm going to get it. <laughs> um, so this is the song that stuck in my memory. It's No Size Why When... You have that incredibly smooth, soulful, and memorable background vocals and instrumental. Mm-hmm. It's like it, it's OP. <laughs> it carries, <laughs> it carries this whole track, but not that it, not that the track needed to be carried because everything is like great about it. Um, I'll, I'll um, elaborate on it. Um, again. Sci High is trying to elevate African American youth this time, though. So, like, um, just to become better versions of them of themselves. That's what I took from it. Um, it's that whole concept is reiterated in the hook, which is simple and repetitive. Yet, I found that it works for me, and I enjoy it. Um, it's clear now from this track that Sci High is sticking to a a theme, like in a very obvious theme on this mixtape, because each song connects with the next. And it, that con- like that creates a, a flow-on effect that feels like this picture is being painted, this story is being told. Um, so I'll like explain what I mean by that. Well, I'm not going to sort of I'm I'm going to start with Master P. So first of all, he's talking about like obviously gangsters and you know how you know um, these are the rules of that life. Then he goes into obviously weak people and how he's saying that. You know, um, those people who might call themselves gangsters and things aren't necessarily helping um, black people to become better versions of themselves. And instead of spending time in the streets, they need to, maybe like he's proposing that they might need to, you know, to spend more time in school and educating themselves um, to be able to to lift their people. Um, and then in get money, he's sort of continuing on that, but calling on the youth more. To, um, to start making a change because then that will have a flow-on effect for later generations. So, like, it's cl- that, that theme is clear, and I love that. Um, I also... Um, standout bars. Um, <laughs> I, I think this is one of the first ones. This for them ends who be looking for a handout. There used to be a standout. Now we ain't got a pot to piss in, probably because his pa- plans didn't pan out. That's just like... Mm. Uh, imagery, love it. And then um, a bit longer, these ones, the ones where it says ends in the pen, fuck with me because I'm trying to keep their, their sons out of prison. Grew up with some real hitmen that have put James Bond out of business. And then I'll finish with this last one, pulling wisdom out my gums like a dentist. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm, yeah. 
Pull. I should have just put that line, to be honest. Pulling wisdom out my gums like a dentist. That's so such a cool line. Yeah. Um, and I will also like to say, I'd also like to say that I think it's really, um, like you can respect how Sci-Hi isn't hiding behind his past life choices. Like he, he's recognized that he has made mistakes in this song. He's admitted to that. He said, um, he said, same joint on a mission, kept a gun in detention. I was wrong for my decisions that I made when I was young because my dumb intuitions now. So he, he, he's, he's not hiding, but he's also saying that he's moved on. He's, he's bettering himself, but he's not like, he talks the talk and walks the walk. And he's now trying to help the youth do the same so that they don't end up in prison or dead. So mm. um, like the content of this whole track is amazing, but the standout for me is that instrumental, those background vocals. They, they are just, it's insane. Like I, it's so pleasurable to listen to like, Oh, five, five stars. Yeah. And, and it's also getting ridiculous. Can I just say, because now for me, I've given four, that's four tracks in a row, five stars for me personally. Mm. That is getting a bit ridiculous. I, I have to agree though. Cause, um, this, the, this beat, like you said, um, out of all the songs on this mixtape, this is the one that I come back to the most. Um, e- even though Master P is just like on another level, this beat is just, this beat is on another level in a way, but in a, they're like on two different planets and these planets are amazing, okay? Um, but it, the soul sample, like you said, and the way it's chopped, the way that the sample is chopped is what elevates it. Then you put the drums on top and these, okay, these drums compared to weak people drums, it's just, it's night and day. Okay. This, this is what I want my drums to sound like. Mm. Um, so yeah, this I'm going to say it is the is my favorite instrumental on the mixtape. Um, and yeah, everything Matt said is on point. Like Sci High is having a go at, at just basically rappers or anyone that tries to glamorize the, the gangster lifestyle. Like when he says, you know, ah, I get it. Y'all don't think it's cool to have a job? Fuck what these rap ends talking about. Ain't nothing cool about the mob. My aunt Ray yeah. robbed a Mexican. Now the cartel shooting at his car. All for a necklace and a couple pair of shoes at the mall. Like, yeah, yeah. Rappers, rappers rap about that stuff and they make it sound real cool. Like, yeah, I had a shoot off. I got my drugs. I sold that shit. I made a lot of money. But in reality, you you had a go. You, you killed a Mexican. The cartel's now after you. And yeah, you, you may have got a necklace out of it. And now people are trying to kill you. That's not, it's not cool. Um, well, the thing is, we like listening to it too. Hell yeah. It's like, you know, Stop we it. love listening to it, but the reality of it isn't good. Yeah. So he's just calling out rappers who just only glamorize that lifestyle. Whereas Sci-Hi usually calls it out or when he's talking about that lifestyle, he's talking about it from a personal perspective of when he was actually on the corners selling drugs and not, and you know, he, he's not glamorizing it. So he's having to go at the people mm. too. Um, and then at the end, I think it, it's actually funny. Like he has a go at gold diggers, like women. Uh, the, the, the funniest line is, is when he says about gold diggers, when he says, um, you've been gone for a minute now. Shit. Where's all the women now? It's funny how y'all didn't work out. Suddenly, she's all into fitness now. Like, that's just really <laughs> yeah. clever wordplay. And um, just with the whole, y'all didn't work out, the relationship didn't work out, and now she's all into fitness, working out. Yeah. She's into working out. It's just really funny. And the, and the thing that I wanted to mention, which isn't relevant really to this mixtape or the, or the songs or anything, but on Rap Genius, I was reading along with the lyrics, um, and it says that the lyrics are, it's funny how y'all didn't work out. Suddenly she's all into bitches now. That's, that's what the lyrics are on Rap Genius. 
And that that makes no sense. Suddenly the line is not funny or clever mm. in any way and, and it's just sitting there. And, and that's why I'm like, I just like try not to rely on rap genius too much is all I'm saying because – because there can be mistakes. Yeah, it's 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 user, you know, it's user reviewed and user like it's not official. So I, I didn't go there and type out his lyrics and go, here you go. It's some dude who listened to the song and said, oh hey, uh, he said bitches <laughs> when he didn't. So I just wanted to point that out because it ruined, like it makes it makes his lyrics sound like shit when he's actually funny but yeah the beat yeah. is the star of the show like beat alone five stars and he didn't ruin it so it's still five stars it's a five star song if weak people didn't have that issue that only i have it would be five stars and so four tracks in a row i've been five stars very very interesting baby because yeah again this sample and this beat is so amazing, it just transport you to a different place. Like it gets you in the mindset just like it's just so pleasant to listen to. Mm. And I could listen to that all day. Just it's so smooth and it's the hi-hat and it just breathes so well. Mm. It's just so good. And I'm going to say this. At, when I first heard this song, I thought this hook was trash. I literally thought it was trash. However, it grows on you and it's not as bad. And to be honest, under this beat, I really don't mind it at all. Yeah. Um, well, I will, I, I'll probably should have mentioned that for me, the hook is nothing special at all. And it's yeah. pretty generic and too repetitive. And I forgot to mention that. So that's, yeah, it's not the best hook. But. I will say it's only at the start and it's not anywhere else. So, um, oh, it's in the middle there, but I don't mind it. I'll, I'll give it a pass for how good this track is. Yeah. Um, however, mm. this track oh. is amazing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, well, what's the however? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> however, this song is shit. No, nah, it's, it's amazing. All day it's amazing. Um, like, you know, just, just, I can't get enough of that beat. That beat just helps it all. And there are so many cool lines in here, like ends in the pen. Fuck with me. Cause I'm trying to keep their sons out of prison. Grew up with some real hit men that have put James Bond out of business. <laughs> like, it's just, that's, that was such a cool line. Like that's how many people they've killed. But, um, yeah, you guys have pretty much nailed it on the head. Five stars. Four from four, five stars, baby. Let's go. <laughs> can, I My say, phrase. can I just say, like, at this point, like, after I'd selected this album to listen to, this mixtape to listen to, and you had listened to those four tracks, and they were all essentially five stars, what were you thinking at that point? Because, like, you knew this uh, mixtape was 11 tracks, and the first four were just already five stars. What were your thoughts then? I was like, no way. This cannot be all five stars. That's what I, I was like. Where's like so far? It's insane. Yeah. yeah. My only thought was because of the history I have with the mixtape. I was just like, how did I get this so wrong? How the hell did I skip over this mixtape when I heard it? You know, um, however long ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then it also made me question at this point. I was like, well, this cannot be better than Black History Project 1 because I'd heard, obviously, more hype about Black History Project 1. And I was like, the way it's going, it, it's, it's on a similar like, um, like direction to that. And I was like, okay, well, why isn't there more hype about this, uh, this mixtape at this point in the, in the mixtape yeah, anyway? But why, why, are you asking, why are you asking that question now? At this point, because we're because now we're four in, and that's the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You have no other yeah. secret agenda of asking that right now, as opposed to after the next song. 
Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Because no, well, no, I was going to ask it now because from here it sort of it does fall off a bit. Um, does it? Yeah. Interesting. Mm. However, it doesn't fall off for the entire rest of the mixtape. You sure? Yeah. Well, let's yeah, find out. Positive. Let's find out. Yeah. Let's find out indeed. Let's see if this album will be forever in your top albums. Oh, you struggled to get that one out. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. I was muffing it. <laughs> <laughs> Track yeah. five, Forever. Danny, do you want to kick this one off? Um, do I have to? Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> this is a no from me, dog, is all I'm going to say. This is a no from me. Um, the dream run has come to an end. It couldn't last forever, and it's ended now. Um, the sample does not work for me at all on this one. That forever sample, it, it's, it was annoying the first time I heard it, and it never grew on me. It was, it's just annoying. It's annoying over and over again, forever, 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 repeated throughout the whole song. And I just cannot get over that it, it annoys me. Um, and then on top of that, there's a strange like reverse or rewind effect that happens throughout the song. Do you know what I mean? Does anyone know yeah. what I mean? I yeah. do know exactly what you mean. Yeah, there's like this reverse, like, like like when a record player, like when you spin a record player back, it sounds like that, and it grates on me every time. So I'm not a fan of that either. Not a fan of the sample, Not a f or, or at least how they use the sample. Not a fan of how they use the sample. And, and the rewind or reverse effect that they've chosen to implement into the instrumental does not work either. So already there's a big drop in quality in terms of instrumental. The only thing, though, is that the drums kind of slap. The drums do kind of hit pretty hard. Mm. But everything around those drums just doesn't work. And therefore, I struggle listening to this song to register anything that Sci High is actually saying. Because the beat annoys me so much. Like, I don't think he's saying too much of interest in the first verse anyway. You guys might pick a few quotes and prove me wrong. But I think he picks up his game a little bit in the second verse. And I particularly like that little conversation that he plays out between him and his dad where he goes, I remember back in the day I used to think I had a mean pops. He said, you can have anything you dream about. I want the house with the mezzanine pops. So I'm selling what the fiends buy. Fuck selling bean pies. Trying to stack them green guys. Talking Yao Ming high. That was really <laughs> cool. That's a, like a little gem that I managed to get out of the second verse. But the song itself is just, it's way too long. It's five minutes, it's the longest song on the mixtape, five minutes of an instrumental that I don't really care for. It's just, it's too much for me. But like, Sci High himself is actually decent. It's the beat that I have an issue with, and a big one. So I'm going to maybe be generous and give this three and a half stars. Well, I thought you... I thought you were going to go less than that. Yeah. The way I was talking about it just then, I was like, oh, maybe I have given it a yeah. too generous. But I think I think Sci High didn't ruin it for me. Sci High was, was doing okay, especially with that lyric that I said, like really entertained me. But but the beat, the beat just dragged this song down, drags, drags the mixtape down. Mm. I want to jump on because mm. – Definitely a step down, like 100%. Um, you couldn't give this five stars. Um, I've given it four because um, it, was just, it just didn't feel right. There was something about it that just felt off. And maybe it is all the stuff that you mentioned about the instrumental. Like, I did say it was hard hitting, though. Like, I thought it was like... like I also not, said not, that. I said the drums actually slapped. Yeah. Like, and I did find it melodic. 
Um, the 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 forever forever. Like oh I found God, that. Kind of, please don't say that ever again. I, I kind of found it like kind of. I don't know. It kind of grew on me. I kind of got there. Like I, I had the opposite. Like Usually, I was like, this is, "This is a lot. Like this is a step off of what we've just had." But then I was like, "Oh, okay. It's kind of winding it down." And I f- feel like for what was to come after this, it kind of needed to. Um, like what? Based on the next, based on the following two tracks, it needed like to drop two, in I, quality. Yeah. The, like the the mixtape needed to drop in quality for the for the songs to come. What follows after this? Otherwise, it's a huge fall off. <laughs> uh, spoiler makes, alert. Can I just say that makes no sense? Like you needed, oh, it makes no you sense. You needed a shit song to, to make the other songs less know, shit. Yeah. Uh, let me rephrase what I'm saying. Um, based on the tempo of track six and seven, this is like on a slow decline, which makes this makes which the, the mixtape between- needed. I can understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to say that if you have a five star down to an absolute garbage track, <laughs> the fall off is way worse. Yeah, I can but see if it that slowly that. declines, yeah. if it slowly yeah. declines, then it feels less <laughs> abrupt. And because oh. of that, like it's not as bad. But how about this? How exactly. about no decline ever? Is that a bit better? I Look, would say that's not, a lot better. Yeah. We're not listening to hell on earth, right, mate? Hey. So we're not we, <laughs> But, like, yeah, I, I, I don't mind. The instrumental, I said, I don't mind. The verses, all, again, I thought they were good. Like, like yes, they, they carried the song here. And this song has my favourite lyrics. What? Um, in, the, in the whole mixtape. And it's, the sh- it's short, too. It's not, like, long, long bars. It's the simple line. I wonder if Aaron would have picked up on, it, on this one. It means so much. You couldn't take the pressure of being Kanye's successor. Did you guys miss that? No, I got no. it. I heard it. Why is it? Why? What's so good about it? it, it it's so good because it, it's well, one. It's so true. Like think about like you know actually think about being selected by Kanye to come onto your label and then he's the next guy after you. Like that. It, it, it'd be like it'd be imagine what like Eminem felt when he was signed by Dr. Dre. Like cause Kanye is that big. Like yeah. the pressure huge and like why else i like it is because it's like well it, it might be a little bit of a explanation from sci high as to why he hasn't reached as, as as big a height as you know he could have because under kanye kanye is going to be like the focus of that label kanye is like he's the man and you know i don't know i just i, I, understand. I, thought it was, I understand the importance of it but to be the yeah. best lyrics he said on the entire mixtape, I don't know, not for me, not for me anyway. But I can't understand it. They're not bars, like in terms of like, oh, wow, that was like lyrical, like that was like multi-syllable. But I don't know, I, I feel like you'd both be impressed with me that I haven't chosen the sexual <laughs> related. <laughs> yeah, but you're just, Low standards. Yeah, you're, just, uh, yeah. you're fooling yourself if you don't think the sex raps that are coming aren't your favourite. <laughs> You're not fooling. Oh, but can I just say? I just say it, it's better when you say the whole thing together. They'd rather see your mama crying at the wake forever. Thirty-eight on the dresser. However, you couldn't take the pressure of being Kanye's successor. You just say you killed yourself. <laughs> yeah, like those lines good. together are better. Like he's telling you the story of like, yeah, you just couldn't take the pressure of being Kanye's successor. So you just pop the thirty-eight, and that's it. Your mum's <laughs> crying at the wake. Like that is. A better line all like together that. to me. Yeah, yeah, I like that now. A little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, true. But I feel like uh, you guys but... missed some really, like, some really nice internal rhyme schemes. All right, here we go. So, like, he goes, like, JP Morgan, we're going to chase the cheddar. Girl ain't a cheapskate. This is your sweepstakes. Ain't gonna order cheesecake, eat steak forever. Take her from the peach state just for keepsake. Camera in the briefcase. Yeah, that does sound like, good. But it, it's really it's impressive. Content in there. Yeah, but sometimes it's not content. Sometimes it's just That's showing true. off a little bit. That's true. That's true. I do like, like good wordplay. Like he's just showing off. Like how can you not like that? He's just gone, all right, this is the sound I'm going for. 
and I'm just going to use it in every line. And he kills it. He like You can't say ed- anyone else could do it better. Yes, it's probably not the, like what you want to hear in terms of like gangster stuff, but it's still extremely impressive. Yeah, yeah. And he also has that line, like, my sister asked me, why always rap about your gun? Do you know how many ends I've done scene shot? Like, I like that line. Like, that's also a really gangster line. Like, that's like, you know, my sister said to me, do you know how many people I've seen get shot? Like, they grow up. Like, he's grown up in that life. So I feel like maybe, like, you beat a little bit harsh, but I think his yeah, lines here are around really cool. that line? He just, he just dumped that line in the middle of an unrelated, I feel. Like, everything around that line. It's a good line, the sister... You know, but I think the the lines preceding preceding it and come after it don't really relate to it. Yeah, maybe you're right. He does. It's not as strong as the others, but I don't think it's as bad as potentially you might be thinking. He also says, "No, well, I said Sci High was the best thing about this. I just didn't pick like a lot of quotes from it." But he also says, "Got so many sheep, they want to slay the shepherd." That's also sick that he's got a lot of followers and people want to be him yeah. and, like, just follow him. They want to kill him. Um, yeah. I mean, I really liked it. Like, I thought this was really good. Not the greatest. It's not his best beat, but I thought this was really good. I think he shows a lot of technique here, and maybe they just didn't chop up the forever the best way. No, I think, definitely not. I think they kind of missed a beat there. Maybe they need to lengthen it out or chop it up differently. But I thought this was like four stars as well. Mm. Yeah. Aaron and I are actually, we're on the, we're, we've got the same marks for everyone, haven't we? Oh, you guys are so cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you want to start a TV show, man? You and I that's together. Cool. <laughs> Boy, that, that second beat drop was cool as well. How he like was like, he's like, let me get back to this. And then came back in again. Oh, I like that in this song. I'm literally off of you guys by like half a star on two songs and that's it. Track six, TV. Aaron, you didn't even try that time. No, because I said, Matt and I are going to start a TV should go show. Oh, Come no, on. I didn't even pick that up. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. That's how good it is. It was yeah. so smooth. And actually, that is the best. When you, can, when you can seamlessly like slip in a transition without me noticing, that is a good transition. Thanks for listening to the show. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at the underscore slim fitty biggie committee and stay tuned for our next podcast. Bye for now.